In this video I'm going to show how to have multiple weapons through scripting. Notice over here is the bullet 1 which I originally had in the bullet 1 script and I have duplicated bullet 1 by clicking on edit and duplicate or pressing Control D that automatically duplicates and renumbers this prefab so it creates a bullet 2. Now, I don't have a bullet 2 script because it's going to behave just as bullet 1 does. So I've attached bullet 1 to bullet 2 which is shown here and I'm going to show what it looks like and then I will show you the scripting behind it all. So the bullet 0 is what it's called is the default bullet and it's this faster one that we've seen this whole time. Now I'm going to push number 2 on the keyboard top row and this is kind of slow and boring, but just to get the point across that they are different bullets, I've given it a different shape and speed. Now I'm going to click on number one on the keyboard, and we get our original bullet type back. Okay, so I'm going to end play here, and head over to the script. Alright, here's what I've done. I have added, going to the top here, I have changed my bullet variables from being static to non-static. This uh, was causing a problem because as soon as I shoot a different bullet type, then all of the bullets on the screen <clears throat> would get all the new bullet type attributes, and that's not how I want it. So I have created an array for the speed, damage, the weight, energy cost, and next fire. I've added a projectile to game object. And in the start function, I declare num bullet types, and that's two right now because I just have two bullets. And remember, in arrays, that's going to start with element zero. So I uh, default to bullet type zero. That's going to tell um, the scripting which gun to use and which of these parameters down here. I have to recreate all of these arrays as new float arrays, and it uses num bullet types as the parameter there. And then I define whatever I want for the speed, damage, weight, energy cost, and for the, the first bullet I have it faster, the second one I have it a little bit slower, they have different wait times, and I can balance these later. Down in the ship's update function, I check for every frame I'm going to see if the player decided to switch weapons and change the bullet type accordingly. So the, the call for that is an if statement input.getkey down, the parameter is keycode.alpha1, that's the one on the top row of the keyboard, or number two. Now to shoot a bullet, every frame I'm going to check to see if the player has pushed fire one, if enough time has passed according to whichever bullet was used. Um, Actually, it checks all the bullets, so you have to wait however long it tells you to. So if there's a really long, uh, like, heavy-duty heavy, pa heavy duty power up, then there would be a really long wait time, and just switching weapons wouldn't be able to get that back, so there's an error trap there. And make sure that there's enough battery life in your battery pack to support the new weapon about to be fired. And then update the next fire, just as before. And now I'm going to create a new game object called clone, but I'm not going to instantiate it until I get down into the switch statement and I know which uh, weapon has been selected. So I do a switch on bullet type and I instantiate bullet 1 here if we have case 0, projectile 2 for case 1, and um, all the other lines are basically the same here. So clone dot get component bullet 1 uh, is going to give me access to that bullet that I just created, instantiated, and I'm going to get access to the speed variable and set it equal to the bullet speed of whatever bullet type I have selected. So I have the same code on these different lines, but it behaves differently because the case is different. And then it takes off the right amount of battery life, depending on which one is selected. And I can scale up from here. I can have as many weapons as I want, and it's uh, be as different as I want them to be.